Good morning. We all have friends and loved ones and we try to speak a word of goodness in their life and I don't know if you've ever felt like you were trying to get a message across to someone and it didn't seem like they were receiving it and then somebody else comes along and says the exact same thing that you think you've been saying and the person hears it and they receive it and you're like, I've been saying that. Well, I hear over the past couple of months in my absence, you guys have had a lot of people <laughs> to come and share the word of the Lord with you. And they shared it in different ways, in different spirits, different lengths. <laughs> Amen. And so I hope that in all of that, there's been a richness and something that was on the table that all of you could receive. I am back. Amen. I'd like to use as a theme this morning, keep going, keep going. Anna, during her 100 meter hurdle heat at the Olympic trials in June 2021, hit the eighth barrier and crashed hard on the track, breaking the navicular bone in her left foot. She later posted, my heart is broken that I didn't get to put up the score I know I was ready for, and my Olympic dreams for this year were shattered before my eyes. Hall had a surgery to insert a screw into this foot and wasn't cleared to walk until October of 2021, missing the Olympics. This past fall, her knee started bothering her the last thing an athlete wants heading into an Olympic year is a trip to the surgery ward. But by the Christmas holidays, Hall knew that there would be no choice. She would have to have surgery. And on January 6, 2024, she went for surgery, six months before the Olympic trials this summer. Doctors repaired her posterior ligament the clock to the Olympic trials started ticking. The minimum recovery time for that procedure is usually 16 weeks. Hall's doctors and trainers plotted a path they hoped would have her sprinting by week 13. As practices began, Anna began to doubt if she would be ready this year for the Olympics. Sometimes we can feel adversity working against us. Sometimes we can see the distance between the thing we want and where we are standing, and it feels far away. Sometimes the weight of what we are carrying makes it harder to get to where we want to go. Sometimes the thing right in front of us makes it harder to see the goal further down the road. Sometimes today feels like it's robbing us of the promise of tomorrow. Sometimes doubt is like the 4th of July firecrackers going off in our ears. Jesus was traveling to various towns, but the text today begins with him returning to his hometown without a warm welcome. This was the place, along with his siblings, where he was raised, where he grew up, where he got in a little trouble, but the place that tried to instill some values in him. They knew him before he knew himself. There was a warm recognition of memories that laid in this place, on this block around the corner. As he came into the city, he was on a high. He had just raised Jairus' daughter from the dead. He had healed the woman with an issue of blood, but he was to encounter a harsh bottom. He went straight to the synagogue teaching those assembled. He was dropping some knowledge on those gathered. One translation of the text says they were astonished. They were amazed at what Jesus was saying, while another text says they were impressed with his words. They were moved by the depth and intelligence of the words he laid down. He had their full attention. And yet, as if suspended in midair like a balloon, one of them reaches in with a needle and pops his words. Isn't that the carpenter, son of Mary? Isn't that James? Justice Jude and Simon's older brother? 
And just like that, just like that, the power of his words popped. Wonder was gone, amazement was gone, impressed was gone, replaced by insult and offense. With a little bit of classism laced in their mindset, they were offended that this guy would have the audacity to talk to them. They tripped over what little they knew about him and they never got any further. It was hard for Jesus to do much in his hometown where he was raised. I have observed from do-it-yourself projects that often what looks simple in demonstration will involve some unexpected twists and turns. In other words, often things do not go according to plan. There is often a complication. Whether a cold welcome in one's hometown or the breaking of a navicular bone in a foot, things happen that slow us down. Whether a storm brewing in the Caribbean or an upward battle at the border of Nepal, things happen that unhinge us. Whether contemplating between one presidential candidate, you wonder if he can finish the race, or another who finishes the race but lies the whole time, things happen that discourage us. Whether it's a surgery before the Olympics or a hometown trying to remind you of who you used to be, things that make us want to potentially quit. We cannot see around corners and turns the phrase on Facebook referring to relationships is apropos here. It's complicated. Jesus acknowledges the complication. We are told he could do very little in terms of healing here. It was hard to get work done. The people's attitudes blocked him from being effective. Won't an attitude shut a show down? So Jesus acknowledges what is going on, but he doesn't allow it to become the whole story, not the entire book. Maya Angelou once said, I can be changed by what happens to me, but I do not have to be reduced by it. Complications will come. Adversity will come. Doubt will come. Unfriendly welcomes will come. Firecracker. <laughs> on the 4th of July will come. Classism will come. And we can acknowledge out here in these streets sometimes one can grow weary, but it ain't the whole story. Jesus models for us what to do next. Jesus moves on. He keeps going. Can you say that with me? He keeps going. In the second passage, he gives marching orders to his disciples. He instructs them to model simplicity and dependency in what they wear and carry. They are to adorn themselves with a confidence that God or strangers will provide what they need. They are to avoid the appearances of seeking personal gain. By staying in a single house in any given place, they make it clear that they aren't trying to gain their way upward to greater creature comforts. He lets them know they have the authority to go and do good in this world. And if someone can't receive it, if someone can't receive what you have to give, bless them and leave. If someone wants to remember who you were instead of who you are, bless them and be gone. Not everyone is going to like you. Not everyone is going to receive what you have to offer. If someone doesn't want to listen, then sever association, refusing to take the town's dust with you. Don't take it personal. Leave the rejection where you found it. Bless them and step aside. Keep going. Somebody didn't hear me this morning. Keep going. Jesus declares in those instances, it's time for us to move on. He acknowledges, even as he is sending them out to do real ministry in the real world, complications are part of this work. Complications are part of life. Complications are a part of relationships. Complications are a part of church work. Anna says, easier said than done. Anna felt like coming out of surgery, the obstacle was hard. She thought about quitting. Every year, the Muslims make the journey to Mecca. 
It is said that once in one lifetime, one should attempt to make this five-day spiritual journey to seek forgiveness for past sins and start anew before God. This year, the journey got more attention because it got a little bit complicated because the temperature was a whole 124 degrees. And over that passage, a thousand people died in such stifling heat, including a lovely Maryland couple, Mr. and Mrs. Worry. At 65 and 71 years old, retired, they had invested 11,500 for each person to make the trip of a lifetime to the Mecca. Perhaps non-Muslims or Christians would say, at this moment at 124 degrees, it's time to turn this show around. But these two shared with their kids, they had come this far and they were gonna keep going. They arrived and the bus that they were promised was not there. And they still decided that we've come this far and we want to keep going. And while there might be sadness that 1,300 people didn't make it, 1.5 million pilgrimages did make it this year. Anna got stuck in the distance between where she was and where she needed to go to be complete, to compete in this year's Olympic trial. The firecrackers were going off in her ears. She began to speak her doubts out loud. Rehearsal after rehearsal, she wasn't improving at the rate she thought she should. Maybe not this year. The firecrackers keep going off. They won't stop. But there's another subtle sound in the background. It's her family and her friends. Not living in her body, they tell her she can do this. Easier said than done. They really believe she's got this, but they aren't the ones putting in the, one, in the work. They aren't the ones that feel this pain in her body. So they keep countering the firecrackers with a faith in her ability to soar. But the voice that really breaks through is the last U.S. person to win the goal in the heptathlon, Jackie Joyner Kersey. The time is getting closer and closer, and Jackie calls and says, I'm going to call you every two days until the trials to make sure your head is right. You can do this, Anna. Keep I'm behind you, we are behind you. You just have to believe, Anna, you got this. And with one week left before the low Olympic trials, Anna, be Anna begins to switch gears. With one week left, a whole lot of whispers keep coming in her ear. Anna. Not only does Anna Hall clinch the title, and I don't know if some of you watched it, Anna is going to Paris this year representing the United States of America. Anna is going to Paris, but it didn't come without struggle. She admits to contemplating quitting the sport she had dedicated her whole life to. Right after clinching the title, Jackie is there giving her a big hug. Anna Hall is the big comeback that they talk about in papers. As the community of faith, as United Church of High Park, that is one of our jobs, to help others keep going, to encourage others when they have setbacks, to be the ones whispering in folks' ears, to be the ones that keep whispering against doubt. Get back up on your feet. Try again. Move to the next town. Share the good news. I watched the race again. I don't know if you guys know, but she's competing in the, I can't say it, well, heptathon. And this is a unique sport event because it is composed of seven different events. But where she sealed really going to the Olympics was the 800 meter run. And so the gun goes off, and she's off to a nice pace, running around the track. There's another person neck and neck for the first run around the track. Second lap, she begins to lead a little. I'm not convinced y'all believe that. Y'all gonna have to give me, I, I'm not feeling no energy here. <laughs> 
keep going and uh, come on now we gotta do better so after that second lap she leads a little she's coming around that last corner the distance between her and the other runner is growing she's getting closer to the finish line she's coming to the finish line keep going Anna keep going come on keep going keep going amen. amen let us pray dear God while Anna's race was one of speed our journey is one of endurance and it's okay sometimes we get discouraged sometimes we get thrown awry sometimes the race seems hard sometimes there are distractions Sometimes, like in the city of Chicago, the firecrackers go off all night. But let us hear you, O oh Lord. Let us hear our Redeemer. Let us hear our Savior. Let us be reminded of the good news in the New Testament. Let us be reminded that you give us authority like the disciples to do good in the world. Let us be reminded to go out together. And when we aren't the ones necessarily that need the encouragement, let us be reminded to encourage others, whispering in their ears. Help us, Lord. Help us to keep going. To keep going. To keep going. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.